subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. China has landed yet another spacecraft, the Chang'e 5, on the moon this week. This is China's third lunar landing since 2013, all of them uncrewed, and China is also the first country to land a spacecraft on the far side of the moon. In this video, we'll talk about the Chang'e mission. What do these missions hope to accomplish and what is China's plan on the moon? My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. So what is the Chang'e 5 mission going to do? It is a sample return mission, which is China's first sample return mission. And it is also the first sample return mission since 1976, when former Soviet Union's Luna 24 performed a sample return. The mission is targeting bringing back 2 kg of material to Earth. Sample return, as you might imagine, is much more complex than just getting inserted into orbit or even just performing a soft landing. Sample return requires safe landing and then safe deployment of instruments which can then analyze and scoop samples and then safe storage of those samples and then the ability to take off again from the lunar surface and then head towards Earth and then, most crucially, pass safely through the Earth's atmosphere. So, a sample return mission is definitely not as easy as the technology demonstrator that we in India are used to as planetary missions. But China also has a larger plan on the moon. This plan involves setting and making a mark on the moon in one way or the other and it is being executed in the form of these Chang'e missions. China's establishment on the moon is being planned in four phases. The first phase is reaching the lunar orbit. This was completed by both Chang'e 1 and Chang'e 2 in 2007 and 2010 respectively. In this stage itself, China exceeded expectations. Chang'e 1 did its job and orbited the moon and then impacted the moon later. But Chang'e 2, after orbiting the moon, went into the L2 Lagrange point. Lagrange points in two body systems, they usually there are five of them and these are points where the gravitational forces of the two bodies balance each other out so that a spacecraft can be sent there to hang out there in relative stability. Now after exploring L2 Lagrange point, Chang'e 2 then went to the asteroid 4179 Tau and it's still zipping around in space. It is expected to return to Earth in 2029. So that was phase 1, orbital insertion around the moon. Phase 2 was landing and roving. Landing, as the name suggests, is just performing a safe and soft landing, while roving is actually moving about on the surface of the other body. Chang'e 3 landed in 2013 and deployed a rover called U2. Chang'e is the name of the Chinese moon goddess and U2 means a jade rabbit which is a mythical rabbit that lives on the moon as Chang'e's pet in Chinese mythology. Chang'e 3 not only landed and roved but also discovered a new type of rock, a kind of basaltic rock that was rich in a black coloured mineral called ilmenite. The U-2 rover stopped transmitting in 2015, but the landing platform, which has an ultraviolet telescope, is still operational. Chang'e 4 was a big deal. In 2019, it became the very first spacecraft ever to land on the far side of the moon. We all know that from Earth, we can only see the one side of the moon called the near side because of tidal locking. We can't directly see the other side of the moon, which is called the far side of the moon, even though now, of course, we have lots of pictures thanks to lunar missions. Chang'e 4 made history by landing for the very first time on the far side of the moon. On the far side, it's much easier to listen to the universe as there's no radio noise. But on the far side, there's also no direct line of sight with Earth, so communication becomes an issue. 
so before they sent the chang'e 4 lander china first sent a relay satellite called chui chao this satellite orbits the moon and picks up signals from the rover on the far side and then relays those to earth after half an orbit china also sent two micro satellites along with the lander and the u22 rover and then the phase 3 of the lunar plan this part of the Chang'e program deals with collecting lunar samples from the near side and then sending them to Earth. Chang'e 5 landed on the northwestern part of the moon's near side in a volcanic formation called Mons Rümker, which is about 1.2 billion years old. This part of the moon is much younger than the other parts that previous human missions and robotic missions have explored, such as America's Apollo missions and the Soviet Union's Luna missions. The Chang'e 5 lander will now immediately start to dig and drill and collect 2 kilograms worth of material from beneath the ground and put them in the ascent vehicle. The lander is not designed to survive the lunar night, so it has about 14 Earth days to dig. When the sun sets on the moon, the temperature will become too cold for it to function. But before the sun even sets, the lander would have finished digging and the ascent vehicle would be launched into space. To do this, there is a rocket that is inside of the lander which will do the blasting off. The rocket will go and then dock with the orbiter that is currently going around the moon which will then reorient itself and fire towards the earth. It is expected to reach earth sometime in mid-December and it will land in China's inner Mongolia region. The samples will be very valuable indeed and the young age of this rock will help us improve our geological techniques as well as find out more about volcanism and geology on the moon. But China isn't going to just stop. Chang'e 6 is going to be launched in 2023 or 2024 which will also be a sample return mission. It will also likely land on the near side only from what we understand right now. And then there is the phase 4 of the Chang'e mission plans. This is the one where a robotic research station will be built or stationed near the lunar south pole. Chang'e 7 is expected to be launched in 2024 or 25 after Chang'e 6. And it will have an orbiter, a lander, a rover as well as a small probe that can fly over the moon. It will scout the region for exploitable natural resources like what of course but water. And Chang'e 8 is expected to be launched in 2024 and it will also have similar modules an orbiter, lander, rover and something that would fly. Chang'e 8 is also expected to carry a 3D printing experiment as well as a life-based closed biological ecosystem experiment. And from then, China will begin the construction of a lunar science base. These plans, while very ambitious, are not unusual. Going forward, we should be expecting to see a lot of independent science platforms cropping up on bodies that we have landed on beyond the Earth. Lastly, China also has plans for sending humans to the moon in crewed missions. The country's space agency is currently exploring ideas for crewed landing missions in the 2030s and for building occupied outposts near the South Pole for research purposes.